So these nuggets are um, made from chicken, but they're made to um, 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 emulate the taste of like like non-chicken nuggets. So these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Let's boost that sound quality. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Non-chicken nuggets. Non-chicken nuggets. But they're made to emulate the taste of vegan nuggets. Sounds tasty. Hello. Hi, hi. Hi. Did you see that video or just hear it? I heard it. It sounded okay, beautiful, but I couldn't see it. But people are not complaining, which makes me think that, okay, it played for the audience. That's good. At least I have it memorized. And it's true. you all have been oriented as to Descript. So welcome. Welcome to How to Make Podcasts with Descript. My name's Ariel Nisblatt. I am on the community team here. Harmony, who are you? Hi guys, my name is Harmony. I'm a customer success manager and product specialist here at Descript. Yay. We have an hour to tell you everything that we know to pass along this knowledge of how to make podcasts with Descript or Descript. A lot of people like to know how to pronounce it. We say both. Um, but first, Harmony, you and I last week were at Podcast Movement Evolutions in Los Angeles. So I wanted to take a moment to kind of recap it for the folks who couldn't make it or maybe were there but want to have our perspective on how the event went. So first, what is Podcast Movement Evolutions? Yeah, so it's an uh, annual conference. It actually happens twice, twice a year. There's Podcast Movement Evolutions, and then there's the uh, larger podcast movement, just called Podcast Movement, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it brings together... Um, folks in the industry, individual creators, businesses that are creating podcasts. And it's it's a great way to network, kind of understand what's going on in the landscape of podcasting as far as new trends, new, new tech. Um, and uh, you can go to a wide variety of different sessions. Ariel, you spoke on like three or four different sessions, right? Yeah, lots of panels. Cool. So yeah, it's 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 super fun three days to to connect with other folks in the podcasting space. Yeah, really fun. And we we did a Descript community coffee hour on one of the mornings. So that was really fun. We had about 30 people show up throughout the hour. We had Dunkin' Donuts and coffee. And it was really fun to, to meet the people that use this product. So if you were there, say hi in the chat. We'd love to say hello again. And if you were not there, but you want to find out about future events, the best thing to do is to join our Discord and I'm going to put a QR code up right now so that you can join our Discord so that you can be made aware of virtual and IRL events to come. We will also put this QR code up again. So I'm going to take it away shortly and get us started with our presentation on how to make podcasts with Descript. Harmony, are we ready? Let's go. Let's, let's go. Okay. Today we're talking about how to make podcasts with Descript. And there are a few reminders before we begin. First, we are live right now on YouTube, but you can also catch this as a replay. So don't worry if you need to leave, we will make sure I'm kind of going out of order here. I'm going in, you know, where the spirit takes me. Good, good, good. So um, if you need to leave early, feel free to come back to our YouTube channel and you will be able to see this and tons of other sessions that we've done in the past. Um, please do continue to use the chat to ask questions and to just chat with each other to make some connections, some creative connections with Descript people and people who are not yet Descript people. It's Those could be your future collaborators. So keep it active. We've got also Marcelo and Christiana in the chat answering your questions. So if you've got them live, we will answer them, but we can also save a bunch to the end. We're going to have some dedicated time for Q&A. If you have questions that are specific to your um, account, the best thing to do is to either join our remote recording office hours or to submit a ticket. That's help.descript.com. And like I said, if we were live right now, so if we freeze for some reason, just refresh the browser and we should be good to go. Anything to add? You're on a roll. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're going to cover today, everybody. First, we've welcomed you. Do you feel welcome? Please let us know. 
we're going to do a demo. <laughs> we're going to talk about what is unique about Descript, what makes it different from other editing platforms. And there is one specific thing that makes it different from ed other editing platforms. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk briefly about recording remotely and then bringing those files into Descript. We'll talk about creating and editing a project. We'll talk about video question mark, meaning either do you record video? And if you record video, what kind of video should you be recording? How do you get the best video quality? But a lot of people have questions about how video fits into audio podcasts. So we're going to address that. We'll talk about templates, music, and sound effects. We'll talk about exporting your audio. We can touch briefly on where that audio goes once it's exported, podcast hosting providers, YouTube, things like that. And then we'll finish it off with a dedicated time for Q&A. Cool. Okay. Harmony, before we jump into this, what is the thing that is unique about Descript? Why am I queuing you up for that? Yeah, I mean, I think the the thing that makes Descript so approachable is the fact that it's text-based editing. Um, in normal sort of traditional DAWs, you know, you're used to going into the timeline, editing in a multi-track sequence. So I think it creates a very frictionless way for especially beginner podcasters um, to get started, record, edit, edit their story down. And th that's the thing I like is that like everyone can like edit a document or at least I hope so. Um, <laughs> um, and so I think that that's the, that's the thing about Descript. That's like the real magic sauce. Yeah. That's definitely the thing that unlocked it for me was I had zero idea how to edit video before I started working here. And then one of our first assignments when we started working here was that we had to make a video to introduce ourselves to our coworkers. Yeah. And I, that was like a real jump start into Descript. And all of a sudden at the end of the day, I can edit video. So it's all with the help of editing as if you're editing a Word document. So it helps a lot. All right. The other, the other, go thing, ahead, go ahead. The other thing I'll say too, is that it, it can help creators consolidate tools into one. So think of Descript as like, you're, this is where you're storing all of your media. This is where you can be recording. This is where you're editing. This is where you're collaborating. This is where you're building design assets and, and then publishing from there. So it's really, I see it as like a one-stop shop. Yeah, me too, definitely. So next we want to talk about recording remotely. And the reason we want to talk about that is because some people are recording in person, but a lot of people are recording virtually. They are mm. calling up their guests on Zoom or on Squadcast. And the reason that I am here today actually is because of remote recording. Almost a year ago, let's say nine months ago, Descript acquired Squadcast, which is a remote recording platform that helps you record video and audio in studio quality with anyone, anywhere, and at any time. I was the community manager over at Squadcast, and now I'm on the community team here at Descript, and I'm all about helping people record remotely. So that's what brings us here today. So Harmony, let's briefly make sure that the folks here know that in order that with your Descript account, you have free access to Squadcast. You don't need to use Zoom anymore. You can use a higher quality recording. You don't need to pay for other services. You can use your account with Descript and get it all done. So why don't you briefly share your screen and show us what's going on there? Absolutely. So if you already have a Descript account, um, there's one thing that you'll need to do before you can start using Squadcast. And so what you'll want to do, you're going to come up here to the top right hand corner, you're going to click on your avatar or initials, go into your settings. And then in the subscription tab, this is where you're going to see this option to connect to Squadcast. So I've already connected my account to Squadcast. So in this case, when I click on this, it will open up Squadcast in um, my default browser, which is Chrome. Um, so that's like the first step that you'll want to take in connecting your Descript account to Squadcast. Long term, remote recording is all going to be within the Descript app. Um, but this is kind of like phase one of what the um, this integration looks like. Love that. Ariel, did I, anything else you'd rec recommend touching on? That's perfect. I think okay. um, if we had all the time in the world, we would show you how Squadcast works. But if you want to get a sense of how it works, uh, like I said before, we have so many webinars that we've done in the past, videos that we've done in the past. So if you're watching us live on YouTube now, or if you're watching us on YouTube later, you can check out our archive search for Squadcast 101. We do those sessions once every two months or so, and they are super helpful in understanding how to record in Squadcast and then bring those files over into Descript. Absolutely. I can even show you guys a little bit later on um, how to go about doing that, but I'm going to focus primarily um, today as an, on a workflow where I've like downloaded my files and we're going to ingest them into Descript and go through the process of 
uh, transcribing, editing, and, and so on. Yes. So in a moment, we're going to go to create the, the beginning of our demo, which is creating and editing a project in Descript. But I really just want to hammer home for folks that if you pay for Descript already, you do not need to upgrade your Zoom account. You do not need to pay for Riverside or Zencaster or any of those other platforms. You can, you're welcome to, but you already have a dedicated remote recording platform within your Descript account. All right, Harmony, let's do it. Let's uh, drag some files into Descript and begin the editing process. That sounds great. Um, and one one thing I just want to mention before I start pulling in some material here is that there's definitely some considerations to make, like before you start your podcast. Um, you know, thinking about the gear that you're going to be using, what your recording setup is going to look like, what does your editing work workflow look like? Are you going to be collaborating with others? So, th so things to kind of take into consideration before you, before you get started and kind of line, get all of your ducks in a row. I, that, is that still a saying? Yeah. Yeah, okay. people say that. Okay. Um, and as you kind of get prepped, um, think about when I have the Descript app open here. This is our drive view. Setting up a folder structure that's going to work best for you. And if you're working with a team, um, an easy way to collaborate. So for example, if you have interviews that are going to span the course of multiple episodes, you might want to create a structure for all of those different interviews. So thinking like, do you, are you going to have epi interviews that are going to span multiple episodes, kind of like a serialized show, or are you going to have interviews that just show up once? Um, if it's the latter, what you're going to want to do is just create a project I recommend a project per episode to kind of keep things neatly organized. And so in this case, today we're creating a, a video project. You can do everything the kind of the same way in an audio only project. The only difference is you're not going to have any video. Um, so there's minus one or two surfaces. Um, so let's pull in some material here. And coincidentally, I have two files that I've downloaded from, from Squadcast. Uh, so I've just got these on my desktop here. I'm going to drag these over. So here they, here they are. Um, the benefit also of recording in a solution like Squadcast is that each speaker is on their, they have, they're on their own track. So the benefit of that is that you'll have some added flexibility later on when you go and, and make edits when and if there's things like crosstalk. So I'm going to select both of these files, Ned and Ariel. I'm going to drag them in. And that'll kick off the transcription process. So uh, this, this is kind of like layer one of the cake. We need to get a transcription back. So in this first step, we're doing what we call speaker identification. Um, so this, I know that this is Ned here. And this is Ariel. Cool. And we're going to combine these into a multi-track sequence. So what that means is it's taking these two files and basically putting them in a container so that we're going to get one neat transcript back uh, that we're going to be editing down from. I've transcribed this already in advance of, of today. So let's pop into that transcript. And here's what we get. Uh, so basically, you have these two main surfaces. Uh, you've got the transcript, which is where you're going to be editing from. You've got the canvas over here on the right, which is where you're going to see your video present um, and where you'll be working with layers. Um, you also have a timeline that you can edit from. You can hide that. And then you also have what we call our scene rail over here on the left. I'm going to pause there. Ariel, any, any questions so far? It looks like the chat is definitely popping off. We've got somebody who says a, a moment of clarity here. Oh, that's how you edit multi-tracks. So we love a very helpful demo. Thank you, Harmony. Let's keep it going. Cool. Yeah. And that's the key is like making sure that you drag in the f files together at once. Um, and again, that creates what we call a sequence. Um, if you drag them in separately, it's going to stack the, their, the audio and dialogue like on top of each other. So we don't want that. Bring them in at the same time. Um, cool. So from here, let's let's do a little bit of editing. Um, going to, let's see here. We, it looks like this is where we start. Hey, welcome to Daily Tips. I'm just going to play this real quick. Hey, welcome to Daily Tips that may or may not help. Okay, cool. And so all of this that happens beforehand, you and Ned got on a little early. We don't need any of this. So I'm going to highlight it. Oh, cool. And I can either delete it, right? And that gets rid of all of that underlying audio and video. You know, if I hit play. Hey, welcome to Daily 
But one thing that I like doing, especially if I was editing this down with Ariel, instead of deleting, you can use this ignore function. You'll notice that when you highlight a range of text, you'll get the script toolbar they can do a bunch of stuff with. The power of ignore is very handy. That way, as you go through and make your first paper edit, you'll be able to track your um, track your editorial um, ideas as you, as you go through and cre create that initial rough edit. That way I can decide if I want to use that as a blooper or something like that. It's not totally gone. <laughs> exactly. And and that's that that leads me to like the uh, kind of collaborative piece of this is that like if you highlight something and let's say Ariel wants to leave a comment for me here using you can say at the tag Christiana should we keep and then Christiana gets notified hey you've been mentioned this project you can pop in and say like oh actually yeah let's not let's not leave that out. I want to use that as a social clip or something like that. Cool. Does that, is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's looking good. We've gotten uh, more validation. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody said that that alone was worth the money. So. Oh, all right. I love <laughs> I mean, it. Understanding sequences is a really big part of understanding Descript. Absolutely. And, and so this is, as far as what you're seeing on the surface, this single transcript, right, that you're that you're working in, under the hood, if I right click on my transcript, I can get into this the sequence editor. So kind of like a more standard DAW view. So I can see here. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. Um, that way, I can kind of see when and if there might be things like crosstalk. So I can go in and remove specific ranges where maybe I don't want that audio, I can just simply highlight it, delete it, can do all of that from, from the timeline, easy peasy. Um, but then to get out of that view, just click done and that'll take you back to the, the transcript. Sorry, that's so big. I just want to make sure people know that they can get a free month <laughs> <laughs> of Descript Pro with code pod April. <laughs> so no. I'll take that off now and we'll bring it up again later, but make sure that if you want a free month of Descript Pro, scan that. Awesome, but yeah, let's we're let's stay primarily. I think in the in the transcript. Generally, I don't even need to go into sequences or the timeline when when creating my first rough edit. It's really about kind of getting the 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 structure of the the episode um, together. Um, okay, cool. So we've got our transcript. This is where we can edit from. We've got our speaker label, so we can see it when Ariel's talking and when Ned's talking. Um, and then as far as, again, we covered like deleting versus ignoring, but what about like when the transcript gives you, like if it misspells something or something's just not quite as accurate. Um, generally, Descript is really good good with um, transcription accuracy. Generally, you'll get about like 90, 95%. Um, but sometimes, you know, it messes up. So for example, if, if it misspells Ariel, for example, which happens can, a lot. Which have does it ha does it happen? Did, did you put Ariel in your uh, transcription glossary? I did, so it no longer does it. But sometimes my last name, which mm. is Nissenblatt, gets um, like I should start screenshotting all of the ridiculous <laughs> things that it calls me. <laughs> it never get my last name. Yeah, my, the way it spells my last name. You got tough last names. It's it's tough. But what and if that happens, you can easily correct it. So if you click on, if you highlight the word that it gets wrong and then use the C key, that's the quick key for this, then I can go in and correct it. And so since your, your lovely name shows up multiple times, I can either correct just this instance or I can say correct all. So in this case, I wanna correct it across the entire interview. So I say correct all and it'll point out over here on the left or on the right, all of the instances where Ariel came up, I'm going to say, great, let's, let's fix it. And now uh -huh. it's corrected it across the entire Validated. transcript. <laughs> Harmony, we're getting a few people asking where the glossary is. Do you mind showing that? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you go up to uh, the Descript logo here, top left-hand corner, and then we're going to go down to tools and then transcription glossary. So, yep, I've got, you know what, I'm going to add in Ariel now. Thank you. And Nissenblatt too, <laughs> while we're at it. Did I get that right? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. All right. So the gloss, this is the benefit of the glossary is that once you add it there, um, it will 
then it will uh, work from that glossary going forward. It doesn't fix your transcripts retroactively. So I'd recommend as you're getting started, add as many names, acronyms, terms that you think the AI might miss. And then that way you're, um, yeah, you don't have to go back and do a, a ton of corrections. Um, does that, does that all make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, we've got a lot, the chat is absolutely popping off right now. So shout out to Christiana and Marcelo who are answering questions as fast as they can. Reminder that we will take a bunch of questions at, towards the end of our hour. So if you've got something that you, you really want to be answered live, save that, um, yeah. and we'll come back to it. And um, I am looking for questions to pop in as we go, but it looks like we are pretty on track right now. Okay, perfect. So so let's, um, we've got kind of like, uh, gonna get rid of, this is something that you'll see too that shows up in the transcript. So you'll see those dot, dot, dots, that's indicating that's wordless media. Um, so in this case, I think it's just silence. So I can also remove that as well. Um, and let's, I don't know why that popped me down to the beginning. There we go. So I can get rid of that silence. I can also um, come up to actions and say, shorten those word gaps. So if there's extended pauses or awkward pauses, I can just say, shorten those gaps and it'll tighten things up. So I'm looking for, in this case, anything longer than three seconds. And I want to shorten that down to two seconds, um, shorten all. So it will programmatically do that. Another thing I, I recommend doing, um, especially like if you've just pulled in your interview um, and you're, you're making corrections, another thing that you can do is removing filler words. And so also from this actions tab, if I click on remove filler words, it's going to point out where all of those ums and uhs are. And if you're dealing with video, the thing to note is that it's going to... Um, it's going to create a tiny little jump cut, but we do our best to optimize the edit boundaries when there is a jump cut to kind of smooth things out. Again, I recommend using the ignore function. That way, if you take out an uh or um and it doesn't feel supernatural, you can just unignore it. And if I click on all filler words, I can say, all right, let's just get rid of the repeated words as and ums. I like to keep some of these in. And then we'll remove all. Cool. Ariel, do you do you use the filler word re removal quite a bit on your shows? No, actually. I okay. don't. I and why is to, that? Yeah, I tend to go through it by I, I go through on 1.8 or 1.5 speed. So if I feel like as I'm going through, I want to cut out a word here and there, I do. But this show is short enough that I don't feel like I need to do any bulk removals. Gotcha. Our episodes right. are just one to two minutes long. We record a whole bunch of them. That's why the file is about 10 minutes long. But generally mm -hmm. speaking, we cut them up into very short episodes. So it doesn't feel like too big of a task. If it were a much longer episode, I probably would use filler word removal to an extent. Awesome. So just so, so folks can kind of hear and see um, what, what this does. So let's take a listen where we've got like these two us removed. I'll, I'll play it from here. Ned, what is it? This one is a travel tip. We've got good travel tips on this podcast, and I feel great. Okay, so like that that second one, maybe it was it was a little, a little jumpy. jumpy. Yeah. So in that case, I could just simply highlight it, unignore, and and bring it back. Well, the the other thing while going through and kind of creating that that first sort of rough cut is um, I like to go through and identify sort of highlights that I want might want to repurpose later as shorter social clips or audiograms. So in this case, I might, uh, if I highlight this range, I'm going to use our highlighting tool. And you can come up with a color code scheme that works best for you, especially if you're collaborating with others. So maybe like purple is for social or blue is for, um, you know, like TikTok or, oh, you know, whatever, whatever makes sense. I, yeah. I love to see how different teams do this. I've never but... thought about breaking that up into color. That's so smart. Yeah. Or so I've seen it where some teams are like, they'll do, you know, green is for um, uh, fact checking, orange mm. is for this needs uh, audio sweetening. So wow. again, do what's best, do what's best for you. Um, but if I go through and create a couple highlights here, um, oh yeah, got the pant hanger tip. <laughs> <laughs> um, so once I create a few of those, what I can do then is if I go up to the actions tab, I'm going to say 
copy these highlights and I can, I can pick and choose which highlights I want to grab. In this case, I want to do all. Then I'm going to come over here to our composition list. I like to think of compositions as new documents. Um, so basically, I want to go from this longer document and create a, a shorter one. So I'm going to create new composition here. And I know I'm going kind of fast. So again, we'll be happy to cover any additional any questions in the Q&A. I'm going to paste that in, just right clicking. And so now it's just brought over only those selections. And I'll title this. Make sure you title as you go. Ned tips. And it's it's that easy to pull clips. Um, Ariel, any do you generally use um, the duplicate to or yeah, highlighting function? Yes, I do. I tend to cut out 10 to 40 second clips to repurpose for audiograms to post on social media. Next. And yes, as I'm going through my recording, I don't necessarily want to copy over the, hi, Ned, how are you? Welcome to the show. But I do want to copy over the main meat of it. Right. And um, and that usually means that I am, as I'm going through, I identify the important part of it or the part that I want to bring over for a clip. And then I duplicate my highlights. Yeah. Nice. And, and in this case, let's see, I think it's only Ned talking. Yep. Uh, let's go down here. That will not close all the way. Well, so uh, maybe take a moment to kind of show how to edit in the canvas. We've talk talked a little bit about editing in the transcript. Um, in this case, since only Ned speaking, I might want to remove Ariel. I'm so sorry. Uh, Bye. <laughs> and then if let's say you're repurposing this for, uh, let's just say Instagram, I can take Ned. Notice I'm clicking on him and if I drag him around, I can make him bigger, I can kind of like recenter this up. From here, I might want to, or I could like, take this and duplicate it, create a, a vertical version. So to Chris, um, to Ariel's point, it, that duplicate function is super handy, especially if you're repurposing for multiple um, or different social platforms. Yeah, definitely. And I think now's a good time to address like we, this is a podcast, but we're playing around with video. How do yeah. you see the difference or how do they work together? Absolutely. You. Yeah. Um, oh, just in terms of like, what would the audio only version of yeah. this look like? Yeah. Um, so what I can do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up my my composition list. If this was audio only, I'm going to set this, setting this to audio only. You'll notice then you'll, you'll still have your audio. So I'll play back. This one is a travel tip. Uh, we've got good travel tips on this podcast. Right. But we, we now have lost our canvas, right? So right. we're we're only working from that that transcript view. So thinking about the podcast that you're producing, maybe you have a version where, um, or maybe you're recording video and audio, but you're inevitably only going to be uh, publishing audio only. Um, but then you can also have separate compositions where you might want to retain some of the video for social clips or or trailers. So that gives you some added flexibility uh, there. Does that, does that help, Ariel? Yes, I think so. I think a lot of folks... So basically, for this podcast, just so everybody understands the use case, we publish video and audio. So we record using the video function. And then when we export it, we just export a video version and an MP3 version. So we're kind of feeding two birds one scone, if you will. That's <laughs> nice. the vegetarian way of saying killing two birds with one stone. I really like that. That's, that's smart. <laughs> And we'll get to we'll get to exporting and, and publishing shortly. Um, the maybe is this a good time to talk about like adding captions and and music? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's right see. now, yeah, it's right now. It's just us talking. Okay, perfect. So let's see here. Um, I'm gonna go back to let's go back to our full episode here. Okay, and let's say if we wanted to, um, I'm gonna go back up to the top. Let's say if we wanted to add, yeah, some some music, I'm going to go ahead and add, this is really important, especially when working with video, um, what we call a scene by adding a slash. And what that's doing is it's creating a discrete segment in our video where we want something visually to change, or um, in this case, we want to add um, some music. So if you already have music sourced, um, all, you, all you need to do is, I'm going to pull up, um, let's do... Let's grab some music. 
All you have to do is find find your, your track, drag it in. I'm gonna drop it into scene one and get this to show up. Cool. Oh, did that not come in? Hang on, I'll bring that back in. You can also drop it down in the timeline as well. I'll do that instead. All right, why does it get me in trouble here? All right, well, I'm gonna try this. Maybe one more we should time. do some stock music. Yeah, let's put. I'm gonna bring in some stock music. Yeah. Um, it's not liking my original music. Um, maybe okay. it got deleted from your desktop or something. That's okay. Let's do that. I'm gonna go into our stock media library, so you can do that by going to the the play button here. This is opens up your um, two things. This is where your files, original files, are stored. But then over on the right, you're gonna have um, built-in stock media that's available to you. So I'm gonna search for some music. Let's do um, chill. Cool. And I'm gonna, you can go through and listen. You can audition these. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like that. <laughs> Let's bring that in. And it'll say loading media. So it's bringing, bringing that music in. And let's see here. So now, uh, I don't know why. All right. Let's, let's yeah, go back here. Why you got an extra. Yeah. Okay. Go there on we now. go. I had an extra scene. Let's pull that in one more time. Cool. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to open up the timeline just so folks can see. Here's here's our music track, and then here's our script track. So if I if I play this here, hey, welcome to daily tips that may or may not help you with Ariel and Ned. I'm Ariel. I'm Ned. Cool. All right. So now we've we've got our music. Um, there's a couple of things just kind of recommended if like you want the music to come in a little bit before Ariel and Ned start talking. In the timeline here, I'm going to stretch this open again. You can click on this uh, word bar and then click and drag right. That's adding a little bit of uh, dead air before they come in. So now we'll hear the music before they come in. You could add like a title um, saying like, Hey, welcome to, you know, maybe a intro animation or something that you want to create as far as like a intro bumper or outro bumper. Ariel, do you usually add, um, Music in Descript? Yeah, uh, we have a composer. So we okay. bring the music in and we make sure that it's not too loud, not too quiet. We use the ducking feature so that it can actually, you know, sound low where when we're talking and then higher when we're not talking. And we actually keep the music throughout the entire thing. I know a lot of people will mm. um, just have the, in, the music for the intro and the outro, but since our show is so short, we usually keep it going the whole time. Cool. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so uh, increase text size here. Cool. So if folks, you want to add um, some ducking, what you can do is uh, over here on the right, there's a bunch of different effects. So I'm just going to highlight a range of text to get my audio effects. I have studio sound turned on, which is a background noise remover and speech enhancement. Um, there's also a number of other audio effects in here that you can enable, but ducking uh, to Ariel's point, you can enable that. And what that'll do is it'll automatically adjust the levels down so that we can hear our active speakers. Cool. Any other audio effects, Ariel, that you generally use when uh, in, in Descript? I like to put a ding after I say the date. Today is Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Ding. Oh, okay. So how would we do that? Yeah, great question. So let's, uh, again, I'm going to pull something from our stock media library. Let's go into sound effects. Uh, let's choose ding. Oh, so many options. Uh, That's that the one. All right. <laughs> so let's bring that in. We'll drop it right here. All right, something went wrong. No worries. We're, we're going to reload. Uh, I'm going to come up here, reload. When in doubt, if anything's acting kind of wonky in the app, uh, you're going to go up to window, reload, um, and that'll that'll usually do the trick. And sometimes I like to, I put the, the bell sound in and maybe it's not exactly where I want it to be because you can't 
have such precision if you're doing it within the text. So mm-hmm. I like to go to the waveform editor below and drag it around as as needed. Totally. Because it looks like we when I dropped it in, it's landing right on uh, 2024. So let's let's take a listen here. Today is Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Next- okay. So in this case, we want to just click on it, drag it over. Okay. And let's see how that's sounding. Is Thursday. Today is Thursday, February 8th, 2024. Ned had love it. Okay, cool. And so again, you can do that sort of that more fine-tuned editing down in the timeline. Whereas up here, you're you're not going to have that sort of that same amount of control. Cool. All righty. We had somebody request, um, can you show how to fade in and out music? Yeah, absolutely. So that also um is something that you'll want to do from the timeline. So we're going to open that up and let's, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can find where the music comes in. And there's a few different ways that you can zoom. I know there's a keyboard shortcut for it. Somebody asked this a moment ago, but you mm. just describe what you did in order to zoom in. Absolutely. So I'm, um, I'm on a Mac. I'm just holding down command. And then I've got this kind of mouse where I've got the little, uh, zoom, zoom, uh, what do you call this? The little, the- roll. I don't know. Somebody's going to be like, how do you not know that? I know. But I do not know that. Okay. So I'm holding <laughs> down uh, holding down command and then just using my my mouse to zoom out or zoom in. There's also um, a keyboard shortcuts for this. So this is a good opportunity to show that off. If you click on the question mark here, go to keyboard shortcuts, this will default to your operating system. Um, so if you're on a Mac, it'll show you Mac keyboard shortcuts. If you're on Windows, it'll show you uh, Windows keyboard shortcuts. So if we go down to timeline, oop, there we go. We're getting skewed. The, it's a scroll wheel. It's a scroll wheel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course. Sometimes it's obvious. There we go. Um, cool. So if you want to fade in, fade out, um, you're going to open up the timeline. In this case, I want to hover over my music track until I see this little white ball here in the left-hand corner. So if I click on that and then start dragging it right, notice how it's it's just now fading in right and you can change the the length uh or the the length of time that it's fading in for so if we play hey welcome to and since i've already used it ducking it was like it was quite very quiet, uh, yeah. very quiet so i might want to adjust my ducking so that it's not quite as uh yeah, I might adjust this up slightly. So again, apply the effect and then kind of calibrate from there to get it where you where you want it. Yeah, so that's how you fade in. Same goes for fading out, but from the other side. And then if you want it to yeah. crossfade, you've got to have two clips next to each other and then drag them into each other. Exactly. So in this case, if I want it to fade out, you just click and drag it in the opposite direction. Um, or if you want to do a crossfade, you can do the same thing, make the timeline a little bit bigger here. Zoom in. Oop. So if, let's say this was kind of like an abrupt jump cut, I can click on the, the white ball here, drag in opposite directions, and it'll create that, that crossfade. Perfect. Cool. Let me just pause you for a moment. We are a little bit past halfway through. In about 10 minutes, we're going to start taking questions directly. But I want to um, make sure folks know that we are giving away a free month of Descript when they use the code PODAPRIL at checkout if you are a new user or if you're on the free plan. So make sure that you have this code. We're also going to be sending an email afterwards so that you can have this information as well as any links that we may have referred to. And something very special is that we uh, we always do office hours on Wednesdays and on Thursdays. So if you um, if you would like to join us for office hours, we've got our Discord community with eighteen thousand plus people hanging out in there. It's really fun and really active, and you can join the community of people that use Descript and help each other out, and also have access to us. Um, me and Christiana are there pretty much all day, every day, and then our support team is also hanging out answering questions. Um, Marcelo has office hours today. I have office hours tomorrow. So if you join our discord, you will be notified of all of that. Lovely. Back to you, Harmony. 
Cool. That was just a little commercial break. No, I love it. Yeah, get get that get that free month of pro. Um, cool. So I, I wanted to show one other kind of thing related to to scenes. We talked briefly about it, but one trick I like using, especially if um, I have multiple uh, speakers on on a show, is if again if you go to actions, and if you do this, add scenes by active speaker. What that'll do is whenever Ned's talking, it'll go full screen. Same thing for Ariel. So notice when I selected that, now it'll go from here where Ariel in, in scene one, where you say, hey, welcome to Daily Tips. Welcome to Daily Tips that may or may not help you with Ariel and Ned. I'm Ariel. I'm Ned. Today is cool. So it allows for that, that back and forth. Um, you can always kind of override um, that multi-cam shot. So let's say if Ned's talking and you want to see Ariel's reaction, you could go, let's say in this case, scene eight, and maybe I want to switch it to, um, we're going to switch the multi-cam view here to Ariel. So that way Ned's talking, but we're, we're seeing how Ariel's reacting here. So nice sort of like um, way to go from one, one uh, camera angle to another. I love this because I think it's an easy way to elevate your video is to have it be a little bit more dynamic rather than just two faces talking the whole time. I think that's fun. And I think if that's what you want to do, that's great. But I also think that if you kind of combine two faces talking with the, the um, active speaker, I think it makes it a more dynamic viewing experience. Absolutely. And, it, and you can always, let's say if there's a moment where you would want to see both Ariel and Ned on, on screen, you can easily go into the canvas. And this is when you start playing with layers a bit. I might want to resize Ariel here um, and let's get Ned back here on screen. I can come in here and just adjust it so that if I want both of them here, I can do that. Let's get a resize there. Boop. Cool. And then that way it's only isolated just to that scene. So it'll go from here in scene seven what a life, but one that can be fixed with a daily tip from us. Pant hangers. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Cool. So that way it'll go that wide angle and then back to uh, the active speaker. Cool. So we've talked about scenes a bit, adding music. Uh, one other thing I want to maybe touch on um, before we open up to Q&A is uh, templates. How does that sound, Ariel? Yes, I think templates are huge. Big time saver. Let's right. do it. Cool. So in this case, I've, I've built a template in advance, um, but the nice thing is that you can essentially kind of create templates on the fly. And, and what I mean by that is, um, let's say if you go in and you start adding things like captions, pull that in and I can move them around. Let's see. Do Welcome to... And I can add in other layers like logos or progress bars, anything like that. Once I do that, I can right click on my scene, I can say save that to a template. So if I've, you know, changed the, uh, maybe I want to update the font to my, my branding, um, I can change that here. I can go into the style of the captions, change that background color or future word color. I can get really fancy here um, and then save that as a template. Once I do, uh, once I have that template, I can go up here. If I click on these Four, uh, four squares here, templates. I'll have a drive view, which it means these are templates that are shared on my account. Um, and then I also have a gallery. The gallery templates are pre-baked templates. Um, these are templates that are made available to you um, through here. But I'm gonna go to my one here, Ariel and Ned. And I've created two. One is for that sort of side-by-side -side shot and then um, solo. In, in this case, I wanna use that. So I'm going to just apply it here. And within one click, Ooh. it's brought all of those, all of those lovely um, elements over. So we've got our stylized captions. We've got this nice border and then background color. Um, easy as that. I would recommend um, applying your template before you create a ton of scenes. That way you don't have to go through and add them uh, one by one. That's so such a good point. <laughs> I would pr pro tip, add your, add your template before you go about creating a ton of scenes. But if you then need to add the template later, you can copy paste it, right? Totally. Yeah. You can uh, copy layout and paste and it into paste, paste layout. Yeah. Paste not ideal, but not as tough as like 
you know, dragging in the right color and making sure all of the elements are rounded to the exact degree. Yeah. And you can also, um, you can always do the same thing in a couple different ways. Um, so I showed the option of like going into the, the template drawer here, but you'll also notice in the properties panel, that's th this panel over here on the right, I can choose a template and apply it fr from there as well. Beautiful. Great. Last but not least, I want to talk about exporting and then shall we open up to Q&A? Perfect. Okay. Right on time. <laughs> um, so let's say I've gone through, I've created my, my edit and I'm ready to now publish. Um, I will go up to the top right hand corner and this is kind of a consideration to make is like, are you publishing directly from Descript to something like YouTube or do you just need to export it and then upload it to the hosting destination of your choice? Um, so the first thing that you'll see is a publish tab. You can, as you'll, if you click on this drop down here, you can go straight out to YouTube, Buzzsprout, and you'll see some other options, things that are kind of grayed out. These are audio only platforms. And so if you were dealing with something that's audio only, the video platforms would be grayed out. Um, and then if we choose export, you can get your video out or, and to Ariel's point, you could export a video uh, version and then an audio only version. Um, and then in this case, maybe I wanna yeah, X out, uh, export a WAV file plus an M4A. Um, and then when you export it, it will download locally to your machine and then you upload it to your, your hosting destination. Um, Ariel, what do you use for hosting? For this show, we use Red Circle. Okay, nice. So in this case, you're you're, you're just exporting the file directly from right. here. Exactly. Okay. But I, for another show, use Buzzsprout, so we can publish directly. Yeah, exactly. So in that case, you choose publish and then go straight to Buzzsprout. Um, once you go here, it'll take you through um, uh, auth, so you'll you'll have to sign into your Buzzsprout account. But then in the background, it'll be uploading your your episode and the the transcript. And that saves you the hassle of downloading and then uploading. Exactly. Makes things a little easier. Yeah. We had a question pop in um, from James Walters who says, are templates only for video? Right, yes. The short answer is yes. Right now they're optimized primarily for video. I, I've seen some folks create like audio only templates where they might want to, um, you know, templatize their intro and outro music, but right now they're really optimized for for video, primarily because they're applied at the scene level. Um, and with audio only projects, you essentially don't have scenes. Awesome. Thank you for answering that. Okay. Harmony, anything to add before we officially go to Q&A? No, I say, I say let's open it up to Q&A. All right. We've got a lot of questions coming in. Thank you to Christiana and Marcelo for holding it down, answering questions as we went. Um, just another shout out for office hours. Marcelo does office hours every Wednesday. I do office hours with Marcelo every Thursday. If you go to discord.gg slash Descript, you will see you'll see our Discord and you'll be able to join us there. I'll put a QR code up for it shortly, but this is another way you can just type discord.gg slash Descript into your browser. Um, and let's now go to some questions. Here is a big one. Q, what is the difference between recording in Descript directly versus Squadcast? Awesome. So the, the main difference. <laughs> Great. So um, the main difference is Descript, if you attempt to record in there, um, it doesn't currently support remote recording. So for example, Ariel's in Brooklyn, I'm in San Diego. So um, we can't like jump into Descript and record at the same time, whereas Squadcast uh, allows you to do that remote recording piece. But Descript is great um, to record into if you just need to do like a quick pickup or record an intro video where you're the only one on screen. So that, that's what I, I would say. Ariel, anything you'd add to that? Yeah, I just to give you an example, I record on, I record using Descript if I have a specific, if I'm like maybe adding something to my podcast with Ned, or mm -hmm. I have another podcast where I sometimes record asynchronously with my, um, with my co-host. Marcelo and Christiana are just reminding me that it's actually Tuesday today, not Wednesday. So Marcelo does not have office hours today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, so that'll be tomorrow. Marcelo has so graciously offered to do an office hours today. So sound off in the chat if you would like to join us on Discord after this to do an office hours, an office hour, if you will. 
um, let us know. And somehow I'll figure out what day it is shortly. But yeah, that that totally answers. Uh, that gets us there, Harmony. Thank you for thank you for that. And thank you for allowing me to add to it. Yeah. All right. Let's go to another question. Um, trying to pull some up from the chat. Um, hmm. While I'm pulling it up, just um, a reminder that you can get your free month of Descript Pro with code PODAPRIL um, at checkout if you're a new user or a free user. All right, back to it. Question from Ayla Anderson. What is the storage limit for projects in Descript? It's a great question. Um, so depending, it depends on what plan you're on. Um, but uh, in the case of, let's see here, it's more about how much material are you transcribing? So for example, on our pro plan, you can transcribe up to 30 hours of content. You can of course go over um, and have the ability to purchase additional transcription hours or even additional seats to give you, you know, an additional 30 um, hours of transcription. So it's really more about how much material are you transcribing? So for example, this interview with Ariel and Ned, um, both of their files were in and around 10 minutes long. So that ate up tw 20 minutes of my transcription time. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Thank you for that question, Ayla. Let's go to this question from Smarter Way. I've got two cameras plus four separate audio tracks, and many of our podcasts are three plus hours. Is Descript going to be, be able to handle this with a bunch of edits? Great question. So in terms of best practices, if it is more than two hours, I actually would probably recommend breaking it up into two separate projects just so that you don't run into any performance issues. One, Some of the guidance I've gotten from our, from our engineering team and support team is for projects that are over two hours, especially sequences with multiple camera angles and multiple audio tracks, break them up into two separate projects. So maybe like part one, part two. Um, it also depends on the complexity of your of your show and the amount of edits that you're doing. Um, so the more edits you create, the sort of more complex your, your project gets. But as I think for something that this length, I would recommend two separate projects. And then you could stitch them um, stitch them together in one final composition that for the full three hour uh, show. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm just seeing in the chat that some folks are having trouble getting on Discord, which means they haven't been able to participate in the community. Feel free to send me an email if you're having trouble getting onto Discord. Unfortunately, Discord is not Descript. I know they sound similar, so I don't want you to mix up the issues with with that platform with the issues of Descript. I want to help you get onto Discord so that you can get some help with Descript, but I know it's all very confusing. Feel free to email me, ariel at descript.com. All right, let's go to our next question. Harmony, could you show us how you would use the eye contact mm. AI tool? Absolutely. So let me go ahead and reshare my screen. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so there is um, a moment in time. Let's see here. Is it where you say today is Thursday? Today is Thursday, February 8th. Cool. Let's do, um, I'm going to go into our properties panel and I'm going to click on the canvas here that will enable me to go into effects and apply eye contact. Well, cool. once it, it, like it usually takes a second to apply, there's a, it'll show you percentage of how, how far along it is. Once it applies, you can, um, let's see here. Okay, and if I turn it off. Okay, so check this out. You can see it's it's kind of subtle. I'm gonna make the canvas a little bit bigger. So here it is off. And if I turn it on, oops, let me go back here. Ooh. Need, to, need to jump to a point. Okay, see Ooh. how they're kind of close. <laughs> and if I turn it on, it adjusts that contact. So Freaky. it's literally like adjusting your eyeballs in their sockets. Um, I use this all the time, especially if I'm like reading off of a, a script or an outline, because um, I'm always like slightly looking up. So uh, th this this comes in handy. So what you'll want to do is click on your canvas to get that effects panel over here on the right, and then you'll click on effects, and it'll show up. And then the bottom, switch it on, and then if you need to remove the effect for whatever reason, you can do that here. And can you do eye contact for only one sequence? Yes. So you can apply eye contact. Let's say um, 
Ned had great eye contact and Ariel, I'm going to pick on you. Maybe you, you didn't have super solid eye contact. You can go into the, the sequence. I'm going to right click and you can apply effects um, on a per, uh, let's see here. Oh, actually, you know what? Done. Oh, my bad. Okay. So if I go to wow, Ned that's here, really good eye contact. <laughs> that is really good eye contact. Yep. And then if I have it on for Ned, I can, I can switch it off for him. There awesome. we go. Yep. Very cool. All right. Ready for the next one? Let's go. Can you add a static image to an audio only podcast to make it into a video? Yeah, absolutely. So if, um, let me show you that real quick. I'm just going to take, uh, yeah, I'm going to take this here and I'm going to turn this into audio only quote. Cool. And so Ned's talking about travel tips here. He's talking about a hotel. I'm going to find an image of a hotel here. Cool. I could do this with B-roll too. Um, oh, that's really pretty. Okay, I'm going to drop that in. And what that'll do is it's going to basically bring the canvas back up. So I could, uh, might want to stretch this out or I could, you'll notice that if I, click on the image, I can change the position, I can change the shape of it. Um, I do, do a bunch of things here, I can rotate it. So now- I do it all the time. Oops, did I apply it? Where did my beautiful image go? Oh, okay, there it is. Ah, ooh, it is pretty. So if I want, in this case, it just showed up for a shorter period of time. So if I want it to last the full duration of this clip, stretch it out, and then that way, this one is a travel tip. Uh, we've got good travel tips on. This. Cool. Yeah, but, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think the point of that is if your podcast is audio only, but you want to be able to post it on Instagram as a social clip, if you add an image to it, that allows you to have what we call an audiogram. And then you yeah. can add captions to it so that we can actually read along as the audio plays. Exactly. Awesome. All right, ready for our next question? Absolutely. Okay, this one comes to us from Andrea. How do you stitch together audio after needing to get rid of an oops that you want out of the audio? Not words, just a cough and a bit of dead space on either side. Mm, great question. Yeah, so um, if it's just like a cough or let's say you're hearing my dog in the background bark, um, what you can do is, uh, I would say go into the, uh, I'm going to go into the edit, edit sequence. Oop. Come on. Great. And in this case, like, uh, let's see here, maybe like, I don't want this here, the no, I can highlight it, delete it. And then that will get rid of that background noise so that my, the other audio is, is present. Or I could, if it's happening, uh, let's say in Ned's track, um, same kind of thing. If I want to get rid of this dead dead space here and highlight it, delete it. Um, so I would, yeah, I would recommend doing that from the, the sequence editor. Awesome. Great. Okay, Harmony, I am going to stop sharing your screen so that we can start wrapping up so that we oh. can see both of us. Cool. Okay. Equal footing. Here we are. Okay. Thank you so much for making it to the end, everybody. Thanks for being here, asking questions. Harmony, thank you for the lovely demo and for answering those questions. Marcelo and Christiana, shout out to you both for holding it down in the chat. There have been a lot of questions. We were not able to get to everything. Marcelo is making himself available um, on our Discord. So I am once again going to put up the QR code for folks to join us on our Discord. So go ahead and scan that with your phone or go to discord.gg slash descript and you can join us over on Discord where we're having all sorts of discussions all the time. That's where our community lives. We would love for you to join our community, whether you're a new user or you've been around for a really long time. We do events like this all the time. We list those on Discord. 
so mm -hmm. you can press that you're interested in them and then get notified when they're happening. And um, we would love for you to suggest events as well. So if you've got ideas, if you've got questions, if you've got concerns, we'd love to know about all of it. So go ahead and scan those. Lots of people scanning that code. Hope to see a ton of you over in Discord shortly. And you'll know that Marcelo goes live because you'll get a notification in the live events channel. And um, then he'll also go live tomorrow because apparently tomorrow is Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I will go live and the cycle will continue. Thank you all so much for joining. And thank you, Harmony, for the lovely demo. And we'll see you back here next time.